Hello, my name is the wee little cat and today I will be interviewing a creature from the magnificent hydrothermal vents. My guest is Dorian, a squat lobster who comes from the great vent on the northeast Pacific Ridge, 6,500 kilometers from Bikini Bottom. Hi Dorian, may I call you Dory? Sure, I prefer Dory over Dorian anyway. Dory, like Dory from Nemo. So how are you today, Dory? I'm all right, and you, wee little cat? Oh, I'm meow nificent. <laughs> Clawsome, quite actually. Now, tell me a bit about where you come from. Well, as you know, I come from the Great Vent. It's a hydrothermal vent on the northeast Pacific Ridge. It's very warm there. It can reach up to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. We are currently 2,100 meters below the sea level. There, I live near a black smoker. Oh my goodness, that's incatably hot. What amazes me is that you can tolerate such extreme temperatures. And do they come in different colors? Sort of. There are black smokers and white smokers. Black smokers differ from white smokers by color, chemicals released, and temperature. Black smokers tend to be warmer and release sulfur, which makes them black, while white smokers mm. release barium, calcium, and silicon, which makes them white. Oh wow. Do you know when the hydrothermal vents were discovered by human beings? Yes, I do. I'm one of the few who do, though, because I was told by the squat lobster of the sea, Larry. So in 1977, hydrothermal vents were discovered by scientists while exploring the oceanic spreading ridge near the Galapagos Islands. This very discovery led to the finding of many new organisms surrounding the hydrothermal vents. Oh, well, that is so fascinating. Now, I have to, I have to say, you do speak English perfectly. What language do you speak besides English? I was taught English by a human. I Don't will. tell anyone. I won't. <laughs> I also speak Municorni, the language of our species. Oh, that's so neat. I speak English too, and I speak French. Anyway, tell me, how are these hydrothermal vents created? It's very interesting how they're made. Shifting tectonic plates leave gaps in the ocean floor, which result in the formation of a vent. The water then heats up after entering the openings and rises back to the floor surface. The temperature of the water coming out of the hydrothermal vents reaches up to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, well. The water, however, doesn't boil because of the extreme pressures. Furthermore, the water surrounding the vents only reaches about 35 degrees. My goodness, that is really cool. Now, can you tell me a little about the relationship and food web down there? Sure. First of all, chemosynthesis is what drives a hydrothermal vent mm. by using a chemical compound as an energy source. Chemosynthetic bacteria are at the bottom of the hydrothermal vent food chain. They often get their energy through the chemical compound hydrogen sulfide, and the chemosynthetic equation is carbon dioxide, oxygen, and water yield formaldehyde, sulfur, and water. Primary producers like vent bacteria get their energy this way and are then consumed by primary consumers like vent shrimp or zooplankton. Those are consumed by secondary consumers like me or the zooarchid fish. He is quite strange if you ask me. Mm. And finally we have the tertiary consumers like the vent octopus or vent rock fish. We have symbiotic relationships in the hydrothermal vents too. Is that so? Could you tell me a little more about it? Well, we don't see much of parasitism down in the vents, but I do believe that most parasites would be protists, particularly on gastropods. Mm. But tube worms and bacteria have an excellent example of mutualism. The tube worms don't have a digestive tract or even a mouth, so they rely on the bacteria living in their tissues to do chemosynthesis and provide them with energy. Did you know that it's estimated that 285 billion bacteria exist per one ounce of tube worm? I did not. That's incredible. An enormous amount. What about commensalism? How could I forget? Sometimes, if a predator is near, squat lobsters like me will hide in the tube worms to avoid being seen. Amazing. Simply amazing. What are some other creatures that live near the hydrothermal vents? There's the scaly foot gastropod, which is only found in hydrothermal vents in the Indian Ocean. It armors its foot with iron sulfides, and it's the only animal known to use iron sulfides this way. Ooh, very smashing, but creepy. What other organisms live there? Well, the Pompeii worm lives there. It keeps its head in cool water, about 72 degrees Fahrenheit, while its tail is exposed to extreme temperatures. Ooh. There's also a species of bacteria off the coast of Mexico that has been able to conduct photosynthesis from Ooh. the glow of a black smoker. Quite the show-off, if you ask me. Just couldn't do what the other bacteria do and conduct chemosynthesis. Anyways, there's also the vent octopus. 
He has adaptations to deep sea living, such as no ink sac, and unlike un other octopi and squid, he hasn't been known to use jet propulsion. Oh. There's actually a vent octopus that lives next to my vent, but she's on vacation right now. She's visiting her family in the southwestern Pacific. Wish her luck. She has to pass by the giant two worms. Well, I've heard they are very calm creatures. Oh, yes, they are. They never talk to you. Oh. They just sit there absorbing chemicals. Very rude. Oh, dear. Anyway, is there any human impact on the hydrothermal vents? Fortunately, where I live, there are no significant human impacts on hydrothermal vents. However, the disposal of metal ballast weights from submersibles can affect the vents in a way because the trace metal volume is absorbed by the vents. In general, the vents inject trace metal volume, but the impact would be higher in regions where there is no metal naturally present. Mm -hmm. And where my grandma lives is where the most impact is. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, it was a pleasure interviewing you and meeting you, Dory. Stay safe down by the vents. It was very nice meeting you as well. Be careful in the human world. Oh, by the way, are you familiar with Larry the Lobster? This is the end of our program, and thank you for watching. I'd like to thank Alexis Poland for voicing Dory and for all of her help. You know, after this past winter in Maine, I'm on my way to visit a hydrothermal vent because I'm still cold from this winter. Cheerio!